everybody? It's your girl, CC with Where It Begins Magazine, and I got my co-host, Theo, on the line with us. Hey, Theo, how are you today? Hey, I'm good, CC. What about you? I'm good. It's Wednesday. You yeah, know? man. One of my favorite days of the week. <laughs> hey, the, the Wednesday, get it, get it, man. Once again, we come together. Uh, Where It Begins Magazine, always bringing you guys dope creatives that are out in the industry, moving and shaking. And uh, yeah, we're going to live up to it again today, CC. That's right. Well, we have two special guests on here today. We're going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves or who they are, where they're from, what they do. All right. Well, I'm Biscuit. And what's up, y'all? I'm Butter. And uh, we're from Philly. Uh, we're music producers. I play the saxophone. And I play the piano, keyboards. And uh, we know each other since um, ninth grade, so pretty pretty long while. And uh, <laughs> we're four-time Grammy nominated as producers, and we've done acting. Uh, I I'm an artist as well now. Yeah, um, I'm a D. Yeah, I'm a DJ. Um, you know, we also done uh, modeling as well. Awesome. This is okay. So what kind of motivated y'all or what pursued y'all to be in this in the music industry? Well, I started out playing saxophone in fourth grade. Uh, and that was because my, my grandma used to have like some like CDs, uh oh no, uh, uh vinyls of uh, saxophone players. And I was, I was always listening to that, be like, oh, what's that? And she would tell me about it. And I was like, oh, really? So oh, maybe I'll play that. So got a chance uh, in fourth grade. Fourth grade, when they asked us what instrument I wanted to play, picked the saxophone, so. <laughs> and um, around like around when I was like eight, or eight years old, um, my mom had a piano that she grew up playing uh, upright in the house. And like, I was playing along like to different songs on the radio and playing by ear. So my parents put me into a classical and jazz lessons, um, which then uh, allowed me to really like get my skills together and um, made it so that I can go to the high school that I met Biscuit at, which is a creative and performing arts high school in Philly. Um, so like I played the piano and I tried the saxophone for a little bit, but uh, after I went to high school and I saw everybody else playing like biz, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna stick to the piano. Uh, cause that was, uh, <laughs> that's where I was like really strong in. Okay. All right. Well, um, I know Theo got a lot of questions to ask, but before we go into his questions, I definitely want to get into y'all new single. Um, let's talk a little bit about y'all single and the motivation behind the song. Oh yeah. So, um, Casamigos is a new single out. It's my new single out, uh, featuring, uh, Eric Bellinger. Mm -hmm. Uh, we uh, got in the studio with him. We had the vibe already. We were uh, in the studio actually because we're like we're producers, so we were there to work on a record for him. But uh, but we did that. We did that after he checked out this. He checked out the Casamigos record, and then he hopped on it and shot the video. And you know, it, I, I just realized as an artist, you got to do music that uh, relates to people. And I was, and I saw like at the time, <laughs> the trend of Casamigos was starting to get popular popularity, and I was like, oh, that might be a good one to tag on to, and you know, because uh, you, you know, you know, brands run the world, so I, I just thought of what type, what type of brand I could connect to where every, that everybody loves. And Casamigos was a was it was an easy one to to, to make a dope song to. <laughs> Everybody loves the term Casamigos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, dope. definitely take check out the video too. Um, you know, like it, it adds it adds to everything. You know, um, like the location, like the people we had in it, everything it just made it like take it to another level. So definitely check out that video. Definitely. Hey, speak on the video real quick, cause y'all made a a real movie out of this thing, right? Yeah. Like y'all, y'all, y'all did yeah. it nice. I, I was ready to go pop me some Casamigo after that. But talk to us about the vision. Uh, what 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 was behind the uh, actual video itself? What was crazy is we actually uh, went out to an Afro Beast night one night, and um, it was at that it was at that place, and we was like, yo, this would be a dope spot to shoot the video in. Man. So and we knew that we had to we had to pick a single, so we were just like, yo, we because we, we just thought it made sense to do that with, with Casamigos and Eric and everything. So that's why we shot it there. 
and uh, we, we we shot at another location too, but uh, for the uh, majority of the location was at that location. But yeah, that was all because we just went out one day. <laughs> and we, and we had, yeah, and we had to make sure that we uh that we did the video quick because that location is not there anymore. So that's, that's like a really cool part because it's really exclusive, you know, like we had it for that moment. So y'all really shut it down, is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff, good stuff, man. And but we listen, did a, we, did a, we did it with Creative Headline. Okay. Uh, they they did an amazing job the whole both days, and yeah, we made a master a masterpiece. We feel. Okay. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. But listen, I I wanted to take take me back for a second, right before we got to the 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 Casamigos, before we got to the making movies, before we got to you know, I'm not sure where it, where it fell in the timeline, but, you know, I assume, you know, once you get in there, the modeling, the uh, appearances, those things come with it, right? So take me back before that, man. Like, you guys are young, hungry, coming up. Uh, obviously, you've stated, you know, how you went into your different instruments, but what was, like, the motivation to really just kind of, you know, land you in this industry? Um, I think... Um... I was uh, I was playing saxophone in uh, different um, <laughs> bands around Philadelphia, okay, and uh, in different groups. And this one group I was playing for this gospel group, and I ended up working, ended up working with a, a producer that was under Rodney Jerkins, okay. So so I so when I went to the studio, and we stayed out there for like a week, and we were just cutting on songs. We were, we did like some stuff for Rodney's wife, and then we did this one song. They ended up on the radio, which was Deja Vu by Beyonce. Okay. And after I saw, you know, having a taste of a number one record and not being a producer and everything, I just said, butter. I was like, butter, this is what we got to do. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing Rodney pulling up in the Maserati and I see the, the plaques on the walls and this big... In this big studio, and he got another crib. I'm like, oh no, this is what we got to be doing. So <laughs> I was on the road. So I was on the road at the time because I, I toured with John Legend for eight years, mm -hmm. and and uh, yeah, while I was on the road, we were just sending music back and forth. We had a studio in Philly, and yeah, that was just uh, that was that was all part of that journey. <laughs> okay, dope journey, dope journey. So so you 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 dropped the uh, the John Legend right. Uh, looking through the resume, mm -hmm. man, y'all riddled with names. Uh, so I was gonna ask, but uh, uh, you know, and I and I still will. Uh, but but I got a feeling like there was a lot of benefits, lessons, connections being made in those eight years that you were out on the road. That do you yeah. see that kind of come into play? You know, with the hits that you guys have put out, with the big names, the Miguel's, uh, you know, the TLCs, all of those that you guys have worked with over the years. Um, you know, we talk we talk to artists all the time. You know, what I mean, networking. Uh, is, is the thing, right? Social media, getting out, getting out in front, and, and creating a base. Uh, you guys were kind of on the inside of the industry and seemed to translate those those connections with people into some hits. So how, what was the thought process kind of once you saw those opportunities start to rise to to work with those giants? Man, but it was crazy, though, because like we didn't have social media like that, like everybody does now. Yeah. <laughs> like I really <laughs> wish we did have social media at that Dang. time. We were they oh, were no, 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 no. <laughs> so, hold on, love. <laughs> a lot, a lot of the thing is that uh, we, well, we worked with uh, like the John Legend, and we did Tonight by John Legend, right? Which was mm. in, like a man movie, uh, uh, six times, which was amazing. We got uh, the Grammy nom for that. But in that session, we were working with Miguel. So then from that, we were able to then work with Miguel and and basically work on his project, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like then um like just being around. Um, in the industry, we got to then work with the Neos and work with Lettuces and, you know, um, but the one thing I will always say is go out, go out, man. Like, cause every single time that we go out somewhere, we meet somebody. It doesn't matter if it's a hole in the wall event or like an industry, like heavy hitting event. Like yeah. we find somebody in every single place that we can, that we can connect with and, uh, and basically creates another opportunity for us to work and, and, uh, you know, continue in this journey. 
That's dope. That's dope. Uh, sound sound like a nugget right there. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> definitely that. Like I said, that networking is always key. But but tell me this. Uh, so obviously that's the that's the getting your foot in the door part, right? That's the introduction. You network yourself. You sell your worth. Uh, I'm sure over time the work has proven itself. You know what I mean? So so people know what you already working with. But how do what what's you guys process? Like, how do you choose, uh, you know, what song or how are you gonna gonna do with the, with the different artists? It just depends on who it is. Uh, we, we don't like to tell somebody what they need to do. We like to hear what they're working on, what the okay. style and the vibe that they're in. And then we try to fit in uh, our sound and try to find a marriage between the two. Because the thing is, they got to sing this song for the rest of their life. It don't matter to us. We're just we're just we're just here to do do what we do our work keep it moving yeah. to the next person. but we're trying but they want to sing it for the rest of their lives so that's what we're here to make sure that they get a record that they can get like that yeah basically like enhancing their idea whatever their idea is you know taking it to like you know highest quality possible yeah. You know? But but they they come into you guys because you guys got the sauce already. You know what <laughs> I mean? So so they want you guys. I get it. You want to marry the two. Uh, but but what was what is it like? Uh, like how easy of a process? Let me ask it that way. Is it to kind of find those marriages? Uh, you know, going through so many different artists and, and a range of artists at that that you guys have worked with. I think it's because we are musicians and we. have done classical and and you know marching band music and uh and jazz and r and b and and all that different stuff so i think the fact that we that we've done that that we understand the different styles and and what needs to be added what rhythms need to be in and different vibes we just we just understand that because of our musicality and it yeah. makes it it makes it really like um like streamlined and fast what we do you know, um, because we'll, we're, we're the type of producers that will be in a session and start from scratch and we making sure that a song is done before we all leave, because that's the kind of producers that we understand, like, um, you know, basically get things out is because the song is complete by the end of the session, you know, and that's the, that's like the goal every time. And it that's does not matter the genre. Yeah, it does not <laughs> matter. <laughs> we, tackle any genre. we have, uh, we got a country song coming out in January that we're really excited about. So that's why we're like literally tackling every genre. <laughs> that's, that's what I want to go into. I wanted to know what's next for y'all. Are y'all doing a tour? Um, what's, what what y'all working on? Uh, we're trying to put together a tour right now. We can't talk too much about that, but we're trying to put together something for next year. There's going to be some shows that we're going to be doing. Uh, that's going to be mainly for uh, Biscuits Artistry um, as far as the yeah. shows. And um and but like you said on the production side we also have the country record coming out we have a few other um like cl a classic R and B artist that we working with is gonna be coming out soon um okay. and we have a, um some up and coming uh, artists that are signed as well that we have dropped yeah the country artist I don't know if y'all heard of uh, Blanco Brown but uh, he's really dope uh he's he's, he's like one of those uh you know the, one of the pioneers of this new uh. Afro African American um, <laughs> country wave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not really not cool. not familiar, but definitely uh it sounds like we need to get familiar. Uh yeah, with, man, get, get with familiar, yeah. man. Yeah. Get familiar. <laughs> yeah. But no, nah, uh that's that's dope, man. Uh it sounds like you guys are are, are trying to uh you know have have these projects coming out. You're going in different directions. No, you can't drop all the names, but but tell the people. What's the best way to kind of keep up with you guys? What's the social media, the website? Where do you want them to go to kind of, you know, see the different pieces and how y'all moving? Uh, you can follow me on all platforms at Biscuit BNB, B I Z K I T B N B, and also dot com. Yeah. And right. if uh, you go to Instagram, you can follow me at B U T T A dot B N B. That's butter dot B N B. That's dope. That's dope. Hello. So, so what, oh, go ahead. No, nah, you got it, Cece. I know. I was gonna say, drop some gems for us. Um, give us a piece of advice. Um, as far as anything, anything y'all want to share with y'all fans right now? Um, 
I guess for me is is find find the best team possible, you know, um, you know, and and make sure that that they all have your best interests in heart, you know, and that that but because whenever you're not around, if they're representing you, that is an extension of you. So make sure that whoever you have on your team is someone that you can trust to be an extension of you and in any room that they're in. Cause that's very important in this industry. There's plenty of people that that say they have your best interests, and then you hear from others that they've been trying to do their own thing. So definitely, you know, focus on your team. I'm very, um, you know, fortunate to have Biscuit as a, um, a part of my team. So you know, it's like find somebody that you trust that you that you can be able to ride with forever. At least, at least during their season. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because that makes no sense when people do the thing where, like, you get in the one way, you get the one opportunity, then they mess it up from the beginning. Then there's only one opportunity. There's no more opportunities. I don't understand the people right. that do that. But uh, <laughs> um, I guess yeah. I would say uh, uh, pa- only do this if you're really passionate about it because uh, there's a lot of times where there's going to be a lot of broke times. You're going to have to invest all your money into it and all that kind of stuff. So only do it if you're really passionate about it and you love it. Don't do it thinking you're about to get some money. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it for the money. The money will come if you do it right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey, I'm taking all that in, Steve. I'm taking all that. <laughs> you you got to have the longevity to stick around, dedication to get to the money uh, yes. a lot of times. Exactly. And, and yeah, that, that's that's where it seems like people miss the grind. So I, I definitely appreciate you guys for mentioning the networking, mentioning the process that you guys are going through. Uh, and, and it sounds like it all started back with, you know, playing musical instruments when you were young. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and I think that's something that's that's missing out. Um, but so. let me let me ask you guys this. Uh, and this is not our, our question at the end. I'm just curious to know, because uh, you guys got a lot of big things popping five years from now. What 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 headline are we reading about you guys? What what they saying? What you just did? If you if you could plan it, uh, producer of the year. Uh, That's what we say. Exactly was going to say. Actually, <laughs> probably going to uh, win a and, Grammy. And, <laughs> but in, in okay. all in different genres. Yes, okay. we just created we just created artists of the year. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, dope. Doing doing the world movies. tour, okay. movies. <laughs> okay, y'all y'all yeah. mentioned modeling, uh, it, it, you know, and it seems like from the videos uh, and the footage, you guys do a little acting. But but any any on the professional side outside of your own projects? No, well, yeah, yeah, we've done like some like fashion week stuff. Um, okay. yeah, I, I I did a a Chase Bank commercial. Okay. Yeah, I was in a coach commercial, um, a firewalk, a noodles commercial. So we've done we've done different like commercial acting as well as uh, like you said, uh, we were in fashion weeks in Florida as well as in LA. So that's dope. That's yeah. dope. It's definitely seen like you gentlemen have uh, taken advantage of the opportunities, and, and hopefully more opportunities continue to come, and you guys keep dominating. For sure. sure. Well, you know, you need seven streams of income, they say. So. We're yeah. trying to find all seven. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the truth, man. That's the truth. Make uh, sure especially... y'all share them gems with me, you know, when you get to all seven. Make sure y'all share that. I'm oh, looking for yeah. man. <laughs> we're, we're, we're looking for we're looking for the most passive income. That's what that's the that's the next one on the list. <laughs> that's always the goal. That's the goal. <laughs> right. So I guess um one question I want to ask before we go into our music trivia or if Theo had any other questions, like what is one of y'all greatest moments that y'all can share with us? You done had I in think, your I think when um when uh we went to we were in the studio and um we were about to work with John for the for a session at John Legend and um he was listening to he was playing like he was playing his music for somebody. And one of the songs was tonight's song that he was playing. And we heard somebody screaming like, what this song? Me and Butter look at each other like, who is that? <laughs> so John opens the door and he sees us. He's like, oh yeah, these are producers, these are producers for the song. And L.A. Reed popped out. We were like, whoa. <laughs> so, that was, so that was a pretty huge moment. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I mean, uh, going off of the, the tonight record, hearing it on the radio for the first time, mm. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, and like that for me was like, a, like, okay, we're here, you know, like, cause it's not like I was playing it in my own stereo, you know, it was, <laughs> it was, so, it was something that like was spinning on, um, you know, all throughout Philly at the time. So like, that was, that was crazy. Okay. That's dope. That's dope. Well, Theo, you have any more questions before we go into our fun fact questionnaire? No, nah, they already uh, dropped some gems. Uh, um, well, well, let me ask you this. So for the young, inspiring, you know, uh, up and coming, want, want, want to be a producer, you know, you, you guys have dropped all types of gems all over the board, right? You dropped the networking, you dropped the, uh, you know, examples of how you guys have stayed ready, embraced and, and, and handled the opportunity. But uh, what, what's the number one thing outside of that, though? Because you know, hopefully they know to motivate themselves to stay hungry, to stay ready, to sharpen their tools and all that, right? Uh, but the business is a business. Uh, so I think Butter spoke a little bit about having people that's loyal to you. But but outside of that, what's the one, the, the number one skill that these young up and comers need to have to tackle the business? Re and be able to read a contract. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Nobody reads contracts. We, we, we was crazy. We've been getting contracts and stuff, and people get surprised when we ask them questions. They're like, "Oh, normally people don't ask us don't ask us questions. They just sign it." We're like, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah so like yeah, that's really what it is. I mean, because having a lawyer is definitely helpful. Obviously, you want to have your own lawyer, have your own legal team, but your lawyer only is able uh, only does the the amount of work and and negotiates what you tell them there that you would like. So if you don't even understand what the contract is saying, you're not going to know what you're going to try and negotiate with. So it's like, for me, the most biggest thing that you can do is uh, learn how to read a contract and understand what it's saying. That's, that's big. That's big. And, and I would imagine if I could add an extension onto that, have your own lawyer. Because uh, too many times we see uh, oh, yeah. where, where, you know, people are going into a situation and using the other party's lawyer. And that yeah, turns out bad. Lawyer. that makes no sense. Have somebody <laughs> on your side. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I imagine it's a lot of financial reasons behind not having your own, you know, that member of your team. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the ones you got to go ahead and handle. Yeah. That's, that's, that is like, that's the most important person on your team. Seriously. Yeah. Your lawyer. And then, and then, and then, finding a manager if you uh if you're looking for one that that actually has you know what i'm saying something that they can bring to the table as well that's big that's big appreciate those gems fellas that that's definitely <laughs> some uh knowledge uh to soak up oh, yeah mm -hmm. but we have a fun fact um game that we do it's um one question a piece that we'll give y'all so i'll go with mine first nothing hard um, if you could perform anywhere in the world, where would you go perform and why did you choose that place? I could go first. Okay. Um, it's more of a selfish thing. I would want to perform in Egypt because <laughs> I always wanted to see the pyramids and I never been able to. So like for me, it's like, and, and I would love to just see, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, what type of, what type of uh, crowd and fans uh, Biscuits Music has out there. But yeah, for me, it's, it's, it has to do with just the, the environment, the scenery, and, uh, you know, the people. All right. And a vacay. I remember one time, Egypt was on my itinerary, and they had, they pulled it off because it was like some war or something going on out there. They had to pull it off. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah, during peaceful times, though, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think because I've been everywhere, like, kind of twice. I haven't been to Australia, though. I would like to go to Australia. <laughs> that'd be dope that'd be dope uh me me personally if i was in your position i'm picking one of those uh kings in saudi arabia right uh you get mm. the vacay out of it like butter wants to get in but uh you know those checks be kind of massive over there so uh that, that well, ain't hey listen man you. if you could put it on the itinerary let's do it let's <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. put it in there man let, let's get that <laughs> let's get that hooked up Let's let's get right. it hooked up. Uh, but yeah, now it's kind kind of similar. Uh, I, I I didn't think CC was gonna take it in that direction. But here's my question to you fellas, right? Uh, any any place, any time, any artist, anywhere in history, if you guys could work with an individual or a group to you know produce, and sounds like uh, you know get some get some vocals in there as well. 
who would that artist or group be? Prince Michael. <laughs> oh, did you say the same thing? Yeah, Prince Michael. <laughs> okay, okay. Yo, like seriously, Michael Jackson, man, because like, honestly, he's still a mystery to so many people. Yeah. So for me, it's like, I would love to just, just have that, that session to be able just to like find out the real about like who this man is, you know? And yeah. like the process. James Brown too. James, oh my gosh, yeah. yes. Mm. Mm. That's some dope people, yes. Yeah, I would. Yeah, They're for the fire. They're for the fire. <laughs> mm. So y'all be naming yeah, all day. Y'all start oh, thinking Prince. about it. <laughs> I, I would think I'm Prince probably. You know, that would be. Yeah. I think that would be you said what? <laughs> I said Prince. Oh, you said Prince and okay, so I didn't see that. Yeah, he he named both of them off the rip, man. Y'all went for the heavy hitters. Uh, definitely, I see my state going into that because, uh, yeah, you you get the benefit in the industry, but also to get to know those legends on that type of level uh, is dope. And that's why uh, hats off to you guys to being able to you know get get to that status with some of our living legends and and, and turn into legends of your own right. So definitely, man, much love, much success. Uh, we look forward to you guys doing bigger. And, and better things as it goes on, man. And definitely that Casamigos is popping. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Right. And when y'all coming to Atlanta? Yeah. Atlanta, uh, okay. Definitely sometime in the new year. Yeah, yeah, definitely next year. Yeah. Okay. We, well, we, got little, we got a little base out there. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely need to come out there and rock with us. Okay, all right. Well, I definitely want to say thanks for interviewing with us today. It's been a pleasure to get to know y'all, know y'all journey. Um, we look forward to everything y'all have going on for 2020. So Atlanta, let us know so we can come out and support. Awesome. Perfect.